Uh, right, I should say something about startup. I suppose I've been uh, I've been using this sort of thing all over the place and uh, pretty much ignored ignored it. So I should say something about it. Um, okay, um, any sort of standalone program starts um, at the method uh, main, and it's uh, method main declared like that, or uh, or like or like that. Uh, both are the same, of course. Um, now this is standalone program um, applets and things like that. Um, they don't require a main, they do something different. Um, now these um, arguments here are in fact uh, parameters passed on the command line and uh, here's an example of what we got here. Uh, if we uh, take this uh, this argument, this uh, array of strings here and, um, and uh, print them all out, one per line like that, then uh, if you call the test you do that if you compile that and you call it um, uh, like this. So if you run it, I should say, uh, and you put A, B, C, D, E, F, X, Y, Z after it, um, then all this lot gets chopped up into tokens separated by white space, and uh, each token is separately put into this uh, array of strings. So when you when you run it, uh, it will print out in fact A, B, C, D, E, F, and X, Y, Z. Uh, it's all pretty straightforward. Um, obviously, this has got to be public. It has to be public so that it can be, in fact, accessed by Java. This is the Java um, interpreter that's running here, and it's ha it has got to be able to access that um, uh, that uh, method that method main in the class that it, you're passing in. So it's got to be able to find the main in there to get it to run. So it must be marked as public because it's got to be accessible, viewable um, outside of that class. And that's about it. So it's pretty simple. I thought I'd better mention it.